If Murray had supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. Blah blah blah. The blah blah blah. Sending out good vibes. Shivers or vibrations and stuff like that. America. Testing such a type of technology on a populated era, area on a foreign country, in my opinion, represents a lot of problems. You know, what if one of those, you know, the dirigibles suffers a malfunction? What if it crashes? Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grand America Show. We are going to be chatting with the one and only Red Pill Junkie a little bit later. You know, it's been so long since we talked to Red Pill Junkie that there there could actually be a few of you out there that don't know who he is. So this will be a, your introduction to RPJ, who is episode two of the show. He designed the artwork that y'all love so much, the logo. And uh, yeah, we met him uh, several times, hung out with him. And he's uh, definitely, without an RPJ, maybe there never would have been a podcast. Yep. Definite possibility. And then we got everybody's favorite interviewer, Graham Tight Pants Dunlop. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just don't even know what to say anymore. <laughs> they're just joggers. That are those jog- yeah. they're just, like Just because my legs are feeling pretty big these days. Are they? Yeah. You don't skip leg day? If I get large, then they're way too long, so... I got to either be tight or Oh, long, you're so. stuck in that height bubble. I'm stuck, totally. Yeah. Everything's That's like too long or too. Madison. Yeah. She's sprung up so oh, tall yeah. that it's hard to find. So you got to get the, the pants a size up, but she's skinny as a rail. So then oh, they just, wow. so then she has like, yeah. she needs to, she's in the belts already. She's huh. eight. Wow. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I get yeah, it. Why don't you just cut back to the, uh, I was thinking back to the time where, when we first, you know, did the show, started mm-hmm. the show. And Red Pill Junkie did the art, and he sent it over, and I was like, where'd you get that art from, Red? Like, it really struck me that I'd seen it before. It was one of those, like, crazy deja vu experiences where I'd be like, that's awesome, and I I thought I had seen it before. Like, it really felt like home for us. And here it is. It and turned into was, home. Yeah, yeah. It was, just, it was just a really good way to kick off the, the podcast and the art. I think this is episode 390. Are we going to do anything special for 400? I don't know. That's just, I don't know. That's like after after the new year, right? Yeah. It'll Probably be eight uh, weeks from now. Or? or are we going to do a Fandango this year? I don't know. We haven't even talked about it really. About time to start thinking about that sort of stuff. Because I got people hounding me for a secret Santa, all sorts of stuff. It's almost, it's borderline too late for secret Santa. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It would have to really come together quick. Yeah. And I don't, uh, there's too many initiatives. We got to be careful about, I don't want to do initiatives and then drop the ball on them. That's one of my sort of things. Well, I'm just, I'm not doing initiative. If people want to do secret Santa, I'm just fucking pairing them up. Yeah, we have to help organize it and then, you know. And you just pair them up. Too much. Or no, how do you do that? Yeah, see. This gets weird. Yeah, see. It's already, (laughs) it's already work. (laughs) (laughs) Work that might fall, fall, (laughs) work that might fall apart. I don't mind doing work if it's going to, you know, going to. Yeah. Come to fruition. Well, we got to do a Fandango. Yeah. We've done that for like five years in a row. I don't know. It's I don't know tradition. where I'm going to be. I might not even be here, so. Where are you going to be? Maybe Vancouver. You knew what about? That's okay. Yeah. We'll phone you in. Yeah. Phone me Last in. year, I did the Fandango driving around Winnipeg. I did two loops around Winnipeg on the perimeter highway. Oh, yeah. While doing the Christmas Fandango. You just want to stop somewhere? No. No? Just... Seemed like it was yeah. cool to cruise, you yeah. know? Yeah. Stopping somewhere starts to seem weird. Yeah. Cops show up, just pulled over, talking on the side of the road for two hours or two and a half, three hours. Grim Steak's been bugging me about the Fandango, oh, too. Oh, has so, he? Okay, yeah. well, we can do it. Then. We should do it. Yeah. All right. Well, what do you got? What do I got? I mean, wow. I don't know. Do you want to address <laughs> the the Grey America chats and the politics and stuff. Because like Red Pill Junkie was on the show, we stayed away from politics for the most part. I mean, of course, of course the deep state comes up when you're talking about ufology and the cover-up yeah. and 
and the army making deals with the TTSA and all that. I mean, it comes up a little bit, but it wasn't in a divisive, divisive way, right? It was that's uh, right, which we have had problems which with I in think, the past. I think we you can talk about politics without it being divisive in a way. How this side of the fucking right? thing? Oh, fall I know. Down. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> that's just something's wrong with our ceiling. They're always stomping around up there. That's the problem. So you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a way, but you know it was it was happening in our chats a little bit where we made we made a political channel, but of course. Politics is like, it's it's creeping through everything now. Uh, culture, it's, it's part of the yeah, culture. It's now. become pop culture. Yeah, so well, it's just and, ruining everything and ruining relationships and yeah, all that terrible shit. Yeah. So and it's I and, mean, and, and and your theory, I think, is that it, that's it's that way on purpose. You know, it's, yeah, uh, by design. It's designed design. to it's designed to destroy communities by subtle little differences that you know because it's like at the end of the day. I think we all probably want the same for people, you know? I don't think people, everyone, if if you, like, took all the surface shit off, and it's like, well, what do you want? You know, it's just you want people to be healthy and happy. And free? And free. Well, I don't know. I mean. Well, no, I would say that everyone wants that. They're just going to have different ways on what that looks like and how to get there. And I have no right, and you have no right to decide what that looks like for other people. Like, it's even like when, when, when I, I'm trying to even get it away from the, like, I think everybody should, because who the fuck am I to think everybody should do anything? Yeah. And it's like, you know, I think I'm on one side and I, it's not that I don't have any political opinions. It's just that the older I get and the more I'm wrong about things that I was sure I was right about, you know, when that happens to you enough times in your life, it's just like. I'm at this point where it's like, I don't feel like I... You don't want to be opinionated about I don't want to be opinionated about fucking anything. Uh Because there's just as much of a chance that I'm wrong about everything as there is that I'm right about everything. And any any influence on myself that makes me think I've got the upper hand is just... Is just... um, It's just like self... I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but I mean, anything that makes me think that my, my position on anything is right is self-motivated. And I don't think there's any way out of that. You know what I mean? There's no way to, I don't know. Well, we, we started out where, when we had these chats way back when, a couple of years ago, um, where we didn't want to even have politics. We didn't want to talk about politics. Actually, we didn't even want to po- talk about politics on the show. But when you talk yeah. about these conspiracies and some of the stuff that we talk about, even like whether it's UFOs or consciousness or well, not even whatever, that. I mean, it overlaps. We got sucked in. It overlaps. I we mean, got sucked you know. in too. We yeah. got sucked well, into the 2016 sure. election yeah. cycle yeah. just as much as everyone else did, yeah. and we chose a side. And dude, now, I cried. I cried. Like I heard. I heard somebody Barrett, in the chats. Barrett, Barrett said he said cried it. at Obama. And I cried at Obama's thing too, man. It fucking hit me hard. It was. Uh, it was emotional. So, I mean, I got sucked in back then, but then I left it for a while and I, I, cause I didn't believe in the the two party system for the most part and Canadian politics was always a joke to me. Like, but then, yeah, I got sucked in a little bit as well, but we, so then we let it happen in our chats and then we don't want to be controlling the stuff as well. No, but, that's just but we did make a channel for politics so that people could just get out of the main channel so that when new people come in, they don't just see a bunch of political bickering and all that. That's right. Or cause it started of- to get, it started to get a little heated last week. About stuff. Well, not only that, I, it starts I, I, to look I, like, I kind of missed it to be it honest. Starts to look like really it. Yeah. it starts to look like Twitter. It starts to look like Twitter. I'm seeing yeah. the same. What it be, what it became is I just go into the chats and I see the same fucking articles that are on Twitter and that are on Facebook. Right. It's just like right. it's fucking depressing. Yeah. And uh, and I think it just makes a lot of people sort of not want to jump in because I think every, I don't know. I think everyone's getting sick of it to a certain extent or they don't want to be wrong or they don't want to argue. It's just not worth it. And that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, I'm not going to argue with any of politics. I don't know if you're right or I'm right, but I'm not interested in arguing about it because I've only got so many fucking hours left to live on this planet. And I don't know how many of those hours there are. I hope there's, you know, tons and tons and tons of them, but I still don't want to waste any of them fucking talking about political opinions that there's just as much of a chance that I'm wrong about that as I'm right about. Yeah. And that actually there's probably no way to tell. Well, your opinion sort of shifted to now. It's it's just all they're all fascist. I mean, that's well, that, that yeah, that's part of it. That's part of it. 
but I don't really, I'm not really into the anarchy or the voluntarism angle either, because then I just think a bunch of dudes with guns are going to start running the place anyway. So it's a mess like I, that's and as someone who's in the last, you know, like 15, 20 years of my life gone from a liberal to a conservative to a libertarian to, a, you know, like. How? Yeah. Where, where am I to say it? from an atheist to a non atheist to like, you know, <laughs> but yeah. now I know for sure, you know, yeah. I, I can start to look at my own human experience as the same as like the human condition yeah. of like science has been fucking wrong about everything it's thought was true yeah. up until today. Yeah. But now we got it figured out yeah. and moving forward, it'll be like, yeah, they figured it out in 2002 and yeah. then they were right about everything. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's not going to be the case. 50 years from now, we're going to be like those fucking idiots thought fucking, you know, it'll be as crazy as the stuff we look at 50 years ago or a hundred years ago. And, um, I can notice that within myself as my own beliefs and everything. And it's like, okay, so I don't, I don't think I'm getting any, I'm probably getting smarter. That's not what I mean. Wiser, but I don't think maybe. I'm or wiser, but I don't think I'm any more right. Yeah. Because if anything, I'm probably getting more chiseled into something. You know what I mean? More set in my ways in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting times though, because like we were talking about before we started recording it, the meme, the meme magic and the, like the elite just can't get away with the same stuff anymore. I mean, it all leaks out. It all seems to come out, you know, there's memes now, like getting ahead of it. Like Prince Andrew didn't kill himself. Oh yeah. Or they can, or it goes, I go back and forth. I'm, I go back and forth on that too, or the, whether it's just that they're, you know, because I've, the main the mainstream is losing control over the narrative, right? I mean, or they, they're changing no, they, the control they try, from the mainstream to the next thing. Well, yeah, but that's you can't. I don't know if you can control that. I don't know if you can control. I don't know either. You know, they're trying. I think they're trying, but I think they're losing it. I mean, the censorship is ramping up again. There's like Patreon's been censoring. YouTube took. A, well, Tripoli just Tripoli, got taken out yeah. of YouTube. I mean, you know, the, so, I mean, I'll tell you right now: if you're on YouTube, don't be monetized. Don't shut off your monetization now. Yeah. Because that seems to be one of the targets right now. I mean, I'm not, I don't think YouTube's a safe place anyway. We're backed up and we're ready to we're ready to roll. Uh, of course, we do always put out like I've got a backup of every episode we've always done. I believe there's about a dozen of those around the world. I know Bill Bill does one. I know I does one over in Finland. So anyway, basically, that's like if you got a bunch of hard drive space and a pretty fast internet internet connection, you know, download all the shows. And make them available as a torrent for us. That'd be fabulous. Or just download them and have a copy of them just in case uh, something ever goes down and we need to start replicating the show all over the planet. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting what's happening. So, like I was saying before, I don't rule out that this is all so that we think, because, I mean, I think this yeah, kind of like, happened in World War II. I think World War II was like a re-posturing and a re-grabbing of power and a re-aligning of the planet in a certain way. Yeah. And I wonder if this isn't the next step of that, because, you know, technically it's, we're at a point where it should be like more, it should be easier to control us. And it doesn't seem like that with the phones and the internet and everything else, but that's all ones and zeros. And it shouldn't be that hard to control that I feel like so I just I still again I hope you I hope I hope they're losing control every fucking part of me hopes they're losing control but at the same time I'm like but maybe they're just funneling us into the next thing which would be like it gets so bad and and then they're like okay here's the new YouTube yeah yeah, yeah or okay yeah. we're gonna or nationalize new, it's, or it's a global we're data nationalizing it's a global, YouTube I mean Yang Yang was talking about global uh, instead of the the World Health Organization, it's like the Global Data Organization. Yeah, the so World Data some, Organization. Here's my concern so, with that. So now all of a sudden, it's gonna there's gonna be a, a massive, yeah, and everything's gonna start slowly going to digital, and books are gonna start subtly changing. Yeah, you know when a book's all digital, just the way they it's not that the hard to maneuver. Right? I mean, exactly. in that book, in that book, like exactly. understanding the F word, he, he he talks about how they changed the definition of fascism. Yeah, you know, the, so the they'll be able to do that when everything's on the cloud and digital in this national data center. They'll be able to do that. They're with already doing everything. it at Wikipedia. I mean, they, they the, can change the book. They the can problem. actually change the book, and they'll have in the AI that's smart enough to change the meaning of the books that you know used to be anti anti Big Brother to be pro Big Brother. You know, the, it'll be that easy. <laughs> and I think that's what they'll, that's what my fear is, is that they'll push us into something and we'll yeah. all be like, yeah. Yeah. 
freedom. They nationalized YouTube and they said no censorship ever, but then they're just, it's just a push to get everything digitalized somehow. So then they can control it. So that they can fully, con- and, you know, they, and they, can gonna, they might your, lose your a couple generations and, and of this the and then they'll just be like, okay, we just got to wait for these guys to die off. Yeah. Taxing, taxing yeah. us for everything and yeah. watching how we drive our cars and how we eat our food and how often how you're on the phone, what you're eating, what you're cooking, what you're buying, who you're talking to, who you're associating with. Yeah. Scary shit. But I mean, maybe not. Maybe they're just losing control because part of me wants to believe that human freedom is, you know, baked in somehow. And that's what the mean, like the, you know, you can't stop because we have access to this platform now. You can't stop the organic memory. Like, you know, they come out like Prince Andrew's a great example, right? He comes out (laughs) with this press release and people just rip it apart. And it's not the mainstream media that's ripping it apart. I don't think. I mean, some of them might have questioned it, but it's, it's the people that are just ripping it apart and then creating funny memes around it, you know, pouring gas on the fire. (laughs) You know, he doesn't sweat and he's at a pizza party or whatever. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Maybe you can. And now what? And now what happened to him? I mean, he's now he's kicked stepping out. down and kicked out of the palace. I mean, really? <laughs> I got a good quote. It's the profound quote of the week. Darren, can you guess? You it? might guess this one. It's the profound quote Brzezinski. of the week. <laughs> well, I'll give you that was close it's very appropriate to our discussion today Americans would be outraged if UN troops entered Los Angeles to restore order tomorrow they will be grateful this is especially true if they were told there was an outside threat from beyond whether real or promulgated that threatened our very existence Dragon? It is then that all peoples of the world will pledge with world leaders to deliver them from this evil. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. Deliver us from evil. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will willingly be relinquished for the guarantee of their well-being granted to them by their world government. I don't need a guarantee on my, my well, well-being. This is what I'm talking. I mean, this is what we're talking about, right? This is this is the control we're discussing whether it's yeah. whether it's they're losing it or not this is exactly, what the plan was this right? is what i'm saying it's they're all the, never gonna try and physically take control they're always gonna do it in a way well, that's subversive why why it's always been done physically no there's world some, war two world war one I. I mean no but no 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 no, no 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 i think the whole physical part of the wars is a big fucking ruse ruse yeah it's the actual winning of the war that's the that's, right, right. Yeah, right. Because the, the victors get to write history. Exactly. So that that was, who's that? Who's that quote from? Uh, McGowan. Henry Kissinger. From an address to the Bilderberger org- organization meeting in Evian, France on May 21st, 1991. How do we let these people say this shit and I, not think that they're all fascists? I, I know. So you're halfway quote, through like, the book? How are you coming along? The the fascism book? Yeah. Uh, it's good, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. It's a, it's a bit... Uh, well, see how it goes, the rest of it goes. I don't want to make up my mind. Yeah. yeah but. So that what we're talking about, for some context, is uh, in the black budget, we have approval to to do the audiobook version. Just of, remember, uh, Dave McGowan uh, is far under, from a leftist or a liberal. Uh, it's coming across that way a little bit. Yeah, well, I guess he would probably be a real leftist if he if he was around and you asked him. Yeah, he would probably say there's no such thing as the left. Right. It's more of what would be considered the center now. Freedom. I mean, we all have the same sort of like you said. We're all we're all closer than we think. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Except for the extremes, maybe. But yeah, there's a huge middle. I would think yeah. if you were to relay it out, like that's the problem. And if you're using you were to old just, terms, if for, you were to take away the fucking limits of communication. And of language and everything else and just be like, if we could just somehow show each other our vision of how we want the world to look, it would probably be like, hey, that's not so bad, you yeah. know, because yeah. I don't think everyone's anyone's picturing it with a boot on your fucking throat, you yeah. know, like yeah. 
Nobody wants fucking Mao's China, I don't think. Maybe the government does, or maybe there well, are people, even, but... Even the people that want censorship want it for right, the right reasons, because they think exactly. it's bad. I mean, they think that that's the right way to go. So there's, dis- you know, there's different beliefs in freedom of speech and hate speech and censorship, but they're all... They all think Everyone it's for just the needs better to grow. good. Everyone right? needs to look within and find themselves before they start worrying about what everyone else is up to. So anyways, that's the understanding the F word from David McGowan. So that's McGowan, the, that's episode the 64. New, which, the F word as in fascism. Yeah. And uh, we're reading it uh, for the black budget and also to put it out on audio for them uh, as a donation to their to their uh, estate. To Well, yeah. The Center for an Informed America, CIA. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course, I talked to Dave's daughter, and we said we'd do the audiobook, get it mastered, get it all ready so that she can make it available on Audible and all that fun stuff. So 100%, we're happy to do that. I mean, McGowan's got a bunch of books there, so it'd be great to start making those more readily available to the people that are too lazy to read books. It's not that you're too lazy, man. I can't read a book. Are you kidding me? I, most 80% of my consumption is through audio. So it's... What's your excuse? But you can read. Well, by the time you read I start the reading, book, you read asleep. it fast too. Well, I spent me t- took That's the whole weekend good to read it. Whole, I read the whole. The, yeah, I read it like you know how many people can get through a book in a weekend? weekend. Do you know how many people get through a book on a weekend? Like fucking point two percent. Well, it was pretty taxing on me. I wasn't feeling very well either. It was weird. It was an emotional weekend. It was an emotional read. It was. Yeah. That's coming up. That episode's coming up with Theo yeah. Flurry. You know. Hey, <laughs> uh, what do we got here? I want to play some. Where did it go? All right, let's get into. Everyone's been bitching about not enough jingles lately, so we'll get, oh, some, huh. get some jingles. Get out a pen and paper and write this, oh, this down. PO box. Why don't you send some physical mail to the Grimerica Show at PO Box one six zero three three? Next line. Uh huh. 100-815, comma, 17th Avenue, SW. Next line. Uh-huh. Calgary, Alberta. Next line. Uh-huh. Canada. Next line. Uh-huh. T2T, space, 5H7. Set the P.O. box. Why don't you send Darren some dirty socks? Because he's got a dirty sock fetish. So, you yeah, you can send it to, uh, you can look at, if you didn't catch that P.O. box on there, too, it's on the, uh, America.ca slash contact. Yeah, it's back on the website. Actually, I think there's a note on here, too. We have a bubble wrap. I couldn't find a note. Here, give me the knife. Give me the knife. Found a note? Yeah, possibly. We got a crack pipe. Actually, I think it's a vaporizer. Oh, this is from Raja. Raja Beetle in the chats. America.ca slash chats. You know, I'm pretty good for fucking smoking any DMT for a little while, but, uh... Are you? For, yeah. Did we talk about your latest one? I think so, right? Yeah, we got into it on the Dick Con yeah. episode. Yeah, I mean, I'm not anti or anything like that. I'm just, no, no, no. I'm just good for a while. That's good. I'd be, I'd be doing it again if I was you. You would be? Yep. I don't know if you would be. No? No, I don't know. It's a fake note. It's a fake note? Yeah. He faked us out? Yeah. It's like folded paper. So it looks like there's a note there. <laughs> Can I have the knife back? Yeah. I got a couple good synchros to read, too. I got a, an awesome one that I just got. From... Oh. So what's that for? Va- that's a vaporizer? You put in there and just... Really? Why? Yeah. Huh. What's so special about it? It looks just like a... Uh, it looks like a little thing. No, he just said that it's the best thing he's found personally. Besides, like volcanoing it, or no, this period is the Would best. You ever, why wouldn't you volcano it? Oh fuck! I I, you're supposed that to could that. be an awful lot. <laughs> that could get crazy. Yeah, because I don't know. Yeah, maybe that'd be. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not uh, opposed to it. I'm not opposed to it. Right now, I'm opposed to doing it for a couple weeks. A couple <laughs> a couple weeks, months. I mean, a couple months, probably. Like in February, March, maybe, yeah. maybe not till after the Vision Quest. I don't know. What maybe. about quitting the wheat, the green stuff for a while, laying off yeah. that for a couple of weeks? I I want to challenge I cut you. Down. New Year's for a month, go without it. A month. Yeah. Hmm. 
What are you gonna go without? Sugar and wheat again. Ooh, that's tempting. I'm addicted to sugar. It's ridiculous. That's oh, like, we're all I, addicted I, to sugar. It's, it's that's the gut voice. <laughs> that's like give me that motherfucking sugar. Yeah. It's like if it if that shit's in my house, I'm having trouble. Like the other day, there's these these gluten free Oreos that I buy. Because the kids get a little treat in their lunch. And and there's, there's sugar in there, right? Oh, yeah. That's the problem there's when you go gluten-free. And I'm just like, there's a whole bunch of other yeah. crap. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, you know, crush the whole bag of fucking Oreos. After I give the guys at work shit for eating too many Oreos. And it's just like, they're I, there. I know. It's like, yep. in the back of my head, it's just like, so that's why I'm at the store now. I just can't even buy that shit. Yeah, my house is pretty Because if it's in my right house, now, I'm just no jonesing. Yep. You might as well be fucking jonesing for yep. crack. Yep. Because that sugar's there, you're going to have a hell of a time not eating it. And I just noticed that I can't, while I'm eating sugar and wheat, I just can't. I don't even I know when the last feel, time I, I went to feel day better. Without I can't feel better. Dope, I can't. Yes. I know. That's what I mean. Like, okay, let's okay. compromise. Go, go. Let's start with like three weeks. Let's start with like a three week. Three weeks. 21 days. Let's okay, start with a week, a week. A week. A week. Okay, let's do a week. All right. Okay. Consider it. But I'm going to go to CAC without wheat again. I started. Yeah, you better start trying to get into CAC shape here. You could yeah, go to, I mean. you're going to go to CAC at your heaviest yet. January. January 1st. Uh, and then there's a vision quest. Vision quest? March 21st. March or se- uh, December? Commune. I think you, you said December. You no, were they're doing a bonfire. The, they're doing a bonfire December? at the commune in December. I can't go then. You got to come up with a better name than the commune. Well, that's what we're having the vision quest for. Just come up with a name. Oh. So March 21st? I like, ah, he's like, I'm going to be bold here and suggest we call it by America. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, March 21st be the vision quest. December 21st is just a bonfire. Are we, you going for that? No. It's no. too hard to get down there. December is a fucking sketchy time to be going through the mountain pass. Because then it's like you're coming back on the 22nd, 23rd. If you hit a storm, you're not yeah. home for Christmas. Yeah. And the tw- it's a weird, too, because I have to work that Monday. Yeah, it's a different. If I was off that Monday, and I'm like, bad schedule. I'm out of holidays. Yeah. I, could, I, can, I can take off the after New Year's because I have a fresh batch of holidays, but I'm. I'm up against it right now. Yeah. So anyway, what do you got? No, I got a, I got a great oh, wait. couple of emails. What, what? Okay, you're going to do that? Yeah. Because I'm going to get into the social media after that. Really? This is a long intro. 2620. All right. I'm a rambling gram with synchronicities all over the web. And Aaron is skeptical about everyone and don't believe it yet. I'm on day one of the microdosing too. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I've been thinking for a Could while be a little giggly. <laughs> that Darren is my kindred spirit. Oh boy. I've been taking mental notes on all our similarities that seem unique. Often I feel the same, think the same, and even act the same. I had the same bum left shoulder. Actually, I got a bum left shoulder too, so. The same weed consumption habits. The same LSD experience, nearly identical, I mean word for word, when he described it on the Black Budget feed. I felt like I was hearing my experience all over. The same childhood dreams of being Billy the Kid and growing up on loving young guns one and two. I almost got an outlaw tattoo as a teen and often said I would... I would have been an outlaw if not a coach today. I have two horses tattooed on my side because of those dreams and thoughts. I've thought about calling or writing in for some time because I have a couple trip reports to tell, a kundalini experience, like an awakening experience, an NDE, precog dreams from my childhood, astral travel experiences as a child, recent ESP development, UFO experiences from my days as a U.S. Marine and early 2002 and more recently in 2016 and recent experiences with the spirit world of good and evil. That's crazy to think about. I could have been a Marine in 2002. I was up to way different shit. So my question, Chris, are you often tardy? Ah. (laughs) That's Indian. Because then you'd be a real kindred spirit. Or did you, do you schedule the same four meetings at the same time? Yeah. (laughs) That's a new problem. Oh, Darren shows up to work on Monday, four meetings at the exact same time. No, one was he at quadruple eight. booked himself. <laughs> one was at, one was at eight thirty, and three were at nine. Oh, 
quadruple back. <laughs> I was like, <sighs> I was in the meeting at the airport and I'm getting like texts from my other, they're like, I'm here. <laughs> I'm at the office. <laughs> So then Sarah had showed up for the safety meeting at the oh. office and she's like, some guy's here for you. <laughs> so my one meeting was rescheduling my other meeting. And then I get there, I get all my stuff ready for Friday. I got my, my studio stuff ready. I'm going to go straight to hockey after reading some audio book. And they're like, oh, fuck, I forgot. Yeah. You know what it was is because the kids oh, went to watch Frozen right. 2 with their mom on Thursday. Yeah. So I switched the day yeah, and I, I, just, I just didn't think of it. Just didn't think about our podcast no. in Crime America. Yeah. Supports down. When supports down, oh. I forget about the show. <laughs> I received a download in August 2016 and was led to much information, answering many of my life's long unanswered questions. This morning, 11 2019, I screamed aloud when randomly listening to episode 173 with Marty Leeds from June 2016. Flat Earth or Marty Leeds? <laughs> that wasn't about that, though. We would have been full into the fucking Trump support right around then. Ugh. No, we weren't really Trump. We were never Trump supporters. Oh, yeah, we were. Yeah, were we? for sure we were. Uh, there was a couple of months there where we were, yeah. I think not it was my not, proudest but it's moment. Not, no, 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 no. But you got to, it's not like that. It was, it's, it was hopeful. It wasn't. That was, yeah. It wasn't. Well, you're still different. hopeful. I became jaded. Yeah. Okay, this is this is where it gets interesting. So this is from June 2016. I heard Darren say that once he dreamt that he took a piss when he... And when he woke up, he had wet the bed. It was a hilarious moment on the show with much laughter, but I started flipping out. The reason this was so crazy is that the exact same thing happened to me just two hours prior. I'm 39 years old and born in 1980, like Darren. I was born in 81. Okay, and this has never happened to me in my entire adult life. Sure, if I had heard this some random day, like if he had heard this some random day, Far from this embarrassing, unlikely event, it would have had not much significance. A piss synchro is not what I thought would have had me <laughs> finally writing, writing in, but what are the chances that I scroll through nearly 400 episodes to land on 173 from over three years ago and hear Darren describing something that happened to me the very night before that has never happened in my life? Hmm. It was the icing on the cake, considering I had already been taking mental notes on my similarities with Darren. This is extremely embarrassing and I never thought I would tell anyone, but here I am writing in to tell you guys. Now you're telling I have like so much more to tell. Tens of thousands. But don't of want this to be too long. <laughs> I will just take this opportunity to tell you that I look forward to hearing a new podcast every week and I'm going through the library a second time. You guys are like best friends I never met. With the exception of two or three people in my life, you two are the only people I feel that I connect with and who would understand me. I look forward to writing in more to tell you about all my experiences and perhaps I can launch my book on your podcast soon. Thanks for being there for me and never quit what you're doing. Chris in Tucson. Tucson, Arizona. Thanks, Chris. Love you, buddy. You got to join the chats. There's a bunch of like-minded people. Actually, join the chats. Grammarica.ca slash chats. And everyone gets along great, except for politics. Yeah. The one thing that divides us. Did you, did you rate that? 8.42. Actually, I'm going to have to give that 9.42. Wow. Because it involves you. Because it involves me pissing my pants. Yeah. I don't even I remember mean, that I mean, the one. guy writes in and says he pissed his pants. I got to give him a nine. Yeah. Yeah. That is pretty amazing. That is insane. Yeah. I hope I didn't The randomness him, of that? I hope I didn't make him pee his pants. Uh... Yeah, maybe. Like a ripple stick kind like of thing? a ripple yeah. stick. Yeah. Okay, I got another one for you. Let's just keep this going here. Ripple, 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 ripple stick. We love getting love getting these in, these synchronicities and feedback and sightings and trip reports. Graham at GrahamAmerica.com. Dear Graham, I hope this finds you and Darren well, and I'm glad to see and hear that the cast is proceeding swimmingly. Or in your case, skatingly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm writing to send a recent synchronicity, maybe the most astounding I've ever experienced, and they happen to me a lot. I was walking up to my room and I noticed a book on the shelf I had never read. Must have bought it years ago on the street here in New York City. It looked interesting, so I grabbed it and threw it on my bed where I was engaged in composing an email to a friend who shares my interest in history. I'd been listening to Michael Wan's Susquehanna River Alchemy as part of my research, 
wherein he posits that the Susquehanna River, the same river on which my friend and I used to live when we were in college, was actually named for the Egyptian goddess Isis, and that this was because the occult secret history of the Rosicrucians had been responsible for the famous Jamestown landing in 1619 from England, and that landing is what is now Virginia, where the Susquehanna River empties after its journey from New York State. I don't know if he, I don't think he mentions in here the uh, the episode we did with him, but that was fun. And I think he, oh. he read both of our uh, charts too. Yeah, yeah. So I'll link to that episode in the in the show notes. I should listen to that chart again now. Lots changed. Yeah, I was astonished to learn from Susquehanna River alchemy that Francis Bacon was a key part of the Jamestown Corporation that first settled America. Yes, that's right. Jamestown was an English corporation. Francis Bacon not only helped settle America, he thought of America as the new Atlantis, but also converted Rosicrucianism into Freemasonry, edited the King James Bible, wherein he apparently inserted much Freemasonry masonry and Rosicrucianism, created the scientific method, authored multiple treatises, and was also probably a major part of a small group of people that was Shakespeare, whose writings are filled with the occult. He was absolutely definitely the major architect of the New World Order against which our tribe struggles, as all conspiracy roads lead to the London from whence he came. I'm telling my friend all this in the email, well, mostly the part about Susquehanna and Shakespeare. He's not really a conspiracy guy. And naturally, I mentioned Francis Bacon multiple times. I hit send on the email and I immediately pick up the book that I'd just taken off the shelf and thrown on the bed. I open the book at random, near the back, and as I live and breathe, my eyes fell upon two words. Francis Bacon. (laughs) I just got the shivers. (laughs) I I was floored. (laughs) The title of the book, you ask? It's called The Roots of Coincidence. Ah, synchronicity. It is by Arthur Kostler, a well-known writer from the middle part of the last century. It's a book about psychic phenomena. He was also a novelist and a historian, all-round intellectual European cat. Needless to say, I was and remain totally floored. How could this have happened? My current thinking, Graham, is that these kinds of things must be done by guardian angels. In this case, to let me know that I'm on the right path. It's the only logical explanation. Wink. Take care, buddy. Love you guys. Peace, Bob. I mean, that's, you know, I just got the massive shivers there. I'm a little teary-eyed with that whole thing. It's That's fucking incredible, right? The P one you know? was more for me. The what? Well, you, <laughs> you know, when you open up a book and you look at two words, that the words that you've, I mean, you just randomly throw it. Like, how does all that come together? You know, I know the skeptics might say, oh, you know, enough times and something like that's going to happen. But those are beyond, those are beyond chance. Well, speaking of opening up a book. Like what, what told him to look at that book? Is that where the angels come in? You know, or is that, or is that like, is that just a glitch in the matrix? Like something is saying like, you know, something is linking all those things together. Who knows? It's like free will. There's no free will. You're just, you're just forced down this path. We think we have free will. You might not have free will. It's a real Anyways, possibility. Thanks for writing in, buddy. That was awesome. Really appreciate it. I'll link to that uh, Michael Wan episode as well. At the very least, your intellectual mind is not running the show. Your intellectual mind is just here to rationalize the decisions your emotional mind makes so that you don't think you're crazy. Okay, Book of Tao today, Tao to, Tao to Ching, Lao Tzu, we on number 13, accept grace willingly, accept misfortune as the human condition. What do you mean by accept disgrace willingly? Accept being unimportant. Do not be concerned with loss or gain. This is called accepting disgrace willingly. What do you mean by accept misfortune as the human condition? Misfortune comes from having a body. Without a body, how could there be misfortune? Surrender yourself humbly, then you can be trusted to care for all things. Love the world as your own self, 
then you can truly care for all things. Huh. Kind of comes back to our... Or dissolution of self. Yeah. You're not important. Which is a weird sort of thing because you have to treat yourself as important and not treat yourself as unimportant at the same time in different ways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because you have to have self-love and self-value, otherwise yeah. you're going to be a mess. The thing is, I think those two kind of go hand in hand. As you, as you kind of fall into one, the other kind of happens naturally. The more you start to care about other things, the less. And you know, it's, it's not even less about attachment to self. It's more about attachment to outcome, maybe. Yeah. Or ego. Or ego or, or yeah, credit. Stuff like that. It kind of reminds me of the recovery thing because in recovery from addiction, you got to you got to take care of yourself, but you got to get rid of the ego as well and kind of get out of yourself. That's it. That's like a because yourself isn't the ego. You know, you you come from like self will run riot to then having to be you know loving yourself, but yet not being that you know letting it go run wild again. Yeah, which is yeah different thing yeah but it can be presented as the same yeah you could confuse them for yeah. sure yeah well uh we're not going to get to the social like, media this like you get to the point where yourself has to be the most important thing because if you don't stay sober for example for people yeah. that are having that struggle then there's just, nothing left there's nothing left if you and can't you're making everyone else's life fucking miserable yeah so you have to yourself comes first in that way but you don't want it to come first in an egoic way you want to dissolve that right drunk ground leaves a trail of destruction yeah behind him, I'm, I'm guessing yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, we all do. Yeah, yeah that's it's right. like it's like what they say. There's three, uh, three. You're gonna end up in jail's institution or death. Like that's it. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> we're not gonna get to the social media this week. We'll save that for next week. We're already at forty minutes. Next week we'll jump into the social media. RPJ's back. Yeah. Hope Good to chat with you again, it. buddy. Support the show. America.ca slash support. We didn't get into that. We need some support. Seriously, it's been a little low. You guys can do better. We love you. Please, let's get ten people this week. America.ca slash support. Hit that support link. Be one of our 10 new supporters for this week. Episode 390. Coming up on Christmas. America.ca slash support. We love you. There's a bunch of other stuff in the show notes too. Review the show. Share the show. Do all that stuff. But uh, we do have rent to pay. Yep. Uh, Enjoy the chat. Red Pill Junkie. got the mysterious red pill junkie back in grime America. it's been a while he's the agnostic gnostic a walking conundrum and a metaphysical oxymoron he's been writing for the daily daily grail doing awesome blogs and reviews over there and of course contributing on other podcasts as well making his way around the ufo and paranormal phenomena welcome back red it's good to hear you again hey man yeah darren graham uh, Michael, pleased to meet you. Uh, yeah, it's it's great to be back. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been, I think, four years. So, yeah. What? Really? I think so. Three for sure. Well, wow. Wow. Time is an illusion, right? Yeah, so that's it's right. Matter. So it doesn't even matter. It was like fucking yesterday. Oh, I know. No. It goes faster and faster People the older have been, you get. That's right. And you're the oldest one here. So th- you're experiencing time much faster than the rest <laughs> of us. <laughs> Um, people have been asking and asking and asking. So finally we're here. People are going to be thrilled and, uh, yeah, welcome back, Red. So, uh, can you give us a little update on what we missed in the last three years of ufology? Oof. 
<laughs> he's kidding. Like, uh, well, yes, definitely. It's, it's, uh, definitely, we can talk about uh, before and after scenes in, in, in the realm of ufology uh, from the year 2017, you know, from October 2017, when Tom DeLong and his buddies held that um, uh, recorded launch of their, of their little venture to the STARS Academy of Science and Arts, you know. And entertainment. So, and entertainment. <laughs> yeah, no, no, let's not forget. <laughs> let's not forget they're not a UFO group, but right. we'll, oh. we'll get that. Yeah. We'll get to that. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I remember I, I, I watched the whole thing uh, streaming from my home saying, what? the hell you know the first time that that we get to see uh uh louis elizondo who has become like uh like mr ufo all of a sudden like everybody talks to him talks about him in reverie or they denounce him uh, and then after that when we say well you know that's that's that may be the end of it uh, we have this bomb that exploded uh, on the New York Times on December of that same year when they released this uh, article describing these amazing encounters uh, of, uh, between Navy pilots and, and objects that look like uh, giant Tic Tacs and that the five... Uh, the, what we consider are the, the, the known laws of physics in terms of um, aerodynamics, velocities, Propulsion. sudden change in trajectory, and, and the enormous amount of G-forces that any hypothetical pilot that will be on board of it will experience. And, and at first, the, the, I think everybody was like, whoa! And for a little while, Every UFO both out, out there had to have a very brief moment of, I told you so, motherfuckers. You know, I wasn't crazy after all. But then 2018 was a bit of a silent year, you know, like uh, everybody was, was like expecting more amazing revelations, which really didn't happen that year. Everybody, everything started to pile up again by the beginning of this year, in 2019, right around, I want to say, April of 2019, uh, Brian Bender, who is a journalist writing for Politico, releases an article dis uh, discussing how the Navy was going to release "Quote unquote new guidelines for the reporting of UFO sightings." Right. This seemed to, in response to the complaints of Navy pilots uh, who were uh, seeing these uh, unidentified objects uh, more and more. But then, and 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 and. People like me and, and others were thinking that the, this announcement was a little too convenient in the sense that it was just a month before the release of uh, To The Stars TV series on Identified mm. on the History Channel, yeah. which was like, oh, well, isn't that convenient that <laughs> you know, they're, they're talking about these guidelines just prior to, 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 to this show. Being, uh, being a premier on the History Channel in the United States, uh, which it did, and it was interesting that after the, the the premiere of the of the of the of the show, after the the day after the first episode, which happened on Friday, Friday night, on Saturday, a guy uh, Keith Kluwer who writes for the the Intercept released this article in which he put into doubt whether Louis Elizondo had been the director of this secret Pentagon program, ATIP, 
you know, AATIP, uh, saying that according to Pentagon spokesperson, he didn't have any kind of like uh, 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 direct uh, competence or direct uh, uh, involvement with that particular program. And what happened after that was interesting uh, because here's another interesting development that has happened because of To the Stars and because of, of all these things. We've seen more and more that in the UFO field, there's been a rise of To the Stars sycophants. You know, sometimes I call them the fanboys just to, you know, just to, to tease them, who seem to be, you know, feel that they, their, their duty is to cheerlead everything that comes along and to the start release on sh- social media, try to promote it and, and, and propagate it on Twitter, on Facebook, whatever. And the moment that someone raises just a little bit of criticism, with regards to to what seems to be a hidden agenda behind to the stars, which is you know just kind of like a to me a logical thing to assume, given how some of the people that are involved in that organization were part of the intelligence community, like the the same CIA. intelligence community that used yeah exactly the same intelligence community that used to be the bad guys. You know, the, the UFO conspiracy theories of the 80s and the 90s now happen to be the good guys, you know, and everybody's supposed to just accept it. Were those fanboys like music fans mainly, like Tom coming along with Tom DeLong or, or legitimate like UFO community people or a mix of both? Hmm. Some of them are kind of like newcomers. Yeah, to the yeah that's kind of what I figured. There might, must be some of that. Yeah, and, and they actually take pride on that. And they say, yeah, we're not going to uh, repeat the same mistakes that the old guard, you know, did, you know, because we know what's going on. And most of us who have spent uh, at least 20, 25 years uh, studying this thing, we just roll our eyes and say, sure, sure thing, buddy. Like, dude, I was you. I was you when I was in my late teens. I was you when Bob Lazar came out of Area 51. Exactly, you know, I, and and the same like <laughs> they uh, behave when when you start criticizing uh, Tom DeLong. I used to be get re- real get uh, get really mad when people started to criticize Bob Lazar, the Santilli alien out of autopsy video. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I used to be that guy. So. Part of me understands it, but the other part of me gets really annoyed when when these guys don't seem to be uh, in the position to try to take any of the criticism from the old guys, saying, hey, my, hey, guys, we've seen this before, over and over and over. People who have uh, promised us, quote-unquote, disclosure so many times, so many times. when when the mainstream media uh, deigns to pay attention to, to the UFO phenomenon, and everybody thinks, oh my God, that's it. You yeah, know, yeah. like Time Magazine wrote, uh, published an article about Roswell in 1997. Oh my God, that, this means that disclosure is at hand. And, you know, more than 20 years later, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Well, unless you think that that 2017 date, like you mentioned, it's two years ago coming up. Like, do you think there's a, is there a before and after to that date? I mean, are we going to look back in five years and go like, that was when it started, you know, the, the, the small D disclosure started. Well, it would be, uh, arrogant of me to deny it and say, no, 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 it's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it could be. Yeah, I have to. I have to concede the possibility that it could. It could be. Uh, on the other hand, it could be that. Uh, here's the thing with disclosure. Disclosure means something t- totally different for each person. Yeah. You know, uh, I was listening to Grant Cameron's interview with John Greenwald Jr. for the uh, Black Bolt. 
just earlier today. And, uh, and you know Grant, you know, he's kind of like a gatling gun on information. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> he can barely keep up. One of the things that really impressed me is when he says, okay, in my opinion, uh, these guys already gave us disclosure. But it's not what people expected because they're just saying, look, yeah, these things are real. Our pilots have seen it. We have video of it. And that's it. But everybody's like, wait a minute, you know, but where are the, the pickled aliens that you have in, 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 in some kind of like secret facility? Where are the crash saucers that, that Bob Lazar talked about? Where are your, your, your uh, evidence of the secret deals that you have made with all these uh, al- alien races that are part of the Galactic Federation and all of that <laughs> when... when uh, what President Eisenhower agreed to them to to abduct people in, in exchange of technology. You know, where's all that? Where I want my zero point energy vehicle, damn it. <laughs> and accor- according to Grant Cameron, he says, sorry, dude, you know, that's all we get. And part of me thinks that there's something to that idea, that all these uh, stories that started to erupt in the field of ufology in the late 70s, in the 80s, and then, you know, took over the field completely by the 90s about crashed saucers and about uh, alien bodies recovered and all of that. All of these stories seem to have originated from, from the intelligence world, you know? in one capacity or, or, or other. And all these people, even people in the know, even people with, with, uh, with intelligence connections wanted to find out. You know, people like Hal Putoff, uh, Keith Green, uh, Jacques Vallée, for example, who have friends, uh, friends in the know. All, the, all these, John Alexander too, all these players heard all these rumors. Oh yes, there's some UFO program running somewhere. They never managed to find anything concrete. And whatever they found is that most of those secret UFO programs run run by the government, they they weren't really about the UFO phenomenon per se. They were really about ways in which the UFO phenomenon affected their little military programs. Like, for example, I don't know, uh, the DIA or the NSA uh, worrying about uh, that their satellites were tracking all these, uh, you know, fast walkers, they called it, you know, all these unknown objects that were entering the atmosphere uh, 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 high velocity. And they weren't like, oh, my God, what is that? They were just like, OK, so how do we, you know, make sure that our satellites don't interpret that as, I don't know, maybe uh, Soviet missiles uh, launching a, 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 a strike against the United States. So what we're seeing is that, uh, yeah, most of the time when, when, when the military are getting involved with, with this uh, phenomenon, they're not really interested in getting to the bottom of it. You know, they don't really care that much. They only care about how they affect it affects their programs, and maybe they're trying to to find out if they can uh, crack the the code of the of the alien technology per se. And they, to my in my opinion, they've never managed to do it. You know, they they have never figured it out. And even if they have uh, hardware of some sort, as everybody claims, and even Louis Elizondo, you know, alluded in one of those brief um, mentions of it uh, when he goes uh, on television on Fox News, on Fox and Friends, on Fox News, and he says, yeah, you know, there's some material, some physical material. But every, when everybody says, oh, there's physical material, here, folks, everybody expects, you know, the goddamn crash saucer from Roswell, you know, like thing that is almost intact and you can just uh, uh, fix a few things, and then you can take it for a spin across the solar system. No, maybe, maybe they're just a few pieces of things that they, you know, they don't really know 
what they are and, and or, or their composition, or even if they have studied the composition, they realize that it doesn't make any sense. Like Valet studying these pieces as well and, and, and other ufologists, and they're discovering instead of finding out uh, that it's some kind of like uh, novel material or something that is not present in the in the periodic table you know the chemical chart ergo we could say oh it, it, it's not from this world they realize no it's actually made from from materials and, and elements that we can find here on earth but the isotopic ratio ratio doesn't make it seems to be that uh, it's not originated uh, naturally right is that what uh, Ballet told us in, in when, when we interviewed here in Gray America, probably you know four or five years ago? And then I guess they're still trying to see if though if that isotopic ratio means it can be used for you know uh, anti gravity features or some kind of like uh, uh, cloaking system, you know, invisibility, or maybe something that can create uh, incredibly, incredibly strong anti-piercing armor for, for armored vehicles, this, which is why now we hear, and the, the latest development is that the army has gotten into, a, into a, a deal with To The Stars because they want to test those materials. And again, it doesn't make any sense, you know, why are they going to knocking the, the, the doors of to the stars, uh, asking them to test those materials that they that they're currently in the possession of to the stars, when supposedly they have hangars full of crash saucers hidden somewhere? You know, <clears throat> it doesn't really make any sense to me, but I guess uh, part of I, I I feel that uh, that uh, I I think I'm not, I'm not making any sense here in in this. <laughs> no, you are. Yeah, synopsis. yeah. No, no, you are. But maybe one of the reasons why I'm not making any sense is because I feel there the, the to the stars. One of their agendas is to obfuscate and to uh, see this information into the public. For whatever reason, maybe there are there are multiple reasons. Maybe one of the reasons is because uh, they want people to support uh, further investment into space weaponry for you know Donald Trump's space force. Yeah, you yeah. know one of one way to 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 do that is to start saying, well, you know, maybe there are threats out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like an indirect, space. it's indirect blue beam, really. And not a direct blue beam, but it's like a a drip yeah. drip of, oh, yes, there are threats. And now the Army's made a deal and they can keep all that stuff a little bit more secret now, some people think, instead of, you know, they can control the the information and... Divide, a, divide us a little bit. I mean, there's, I have so many questions for you. Like, it, it just... There's the, you know, there is a change this time compared to the other times that we experienced in the past, I think, because the media is taking it seriously now. Like 2018 was was a quiet year for for developments directly, except that the media started to stop laughing. I mean, there was less, you know, X-Files music in the background and they started <clears throat> they started yeah. uh, talking less about, ex, you know, hoaxes yeah. and fake <clears throat> stories and more about real mysteries. But so it's, that the, the paradigm is starting to change in that way, but but it is the UFO community seems very divided. I mean, I'm glad to see that you're kind of on the the skeptical side of this whole thing and not just you know buying in into the the whole thing. But the UFO community itself seems quite divided. Well, it's too bad. Mm -hmm. 2018 is also the year that everyone lost faith in the media. That's and it happened at the same time, right? So the media finally yes, starts taking not... UFOs seriously, and everyone's like, "These guys don't have a fucking clue what they're talking about." <laughs> that's a that's a good point that uh, Darren is is raising because if December, the, if the New York Times article of December twenty seventeen, imagine been that's like ninety eight. In nineteen ninety seven, the whole world would have, you know, 
say what say, yeah. fuck yeah. you know the stock market would have crashed or something to that effect but the the article is printed and by then there's a, a, a sizable chunk of, of the American population who thinks of the New York Times as fake news because of the way that the president of the United States addresses, you know, journalism. Or just because of the way they lie. That could be that, too. If you wish, yeah, if you want to go that way, sure. Uh, About a lot whatever, of stuff. Yeah. Whatever the case is that the, the, the impact of, of printed media has greatly diminished in the past few years. So running a story about UFOs in the New York Times is not as impactful as it used to be, you know, like 20, 30 years ago. I mean, even Stanton Friedman, who we sadly lost this year, he used to talk about the New York Times effect, you know, that a skeptical people will say, well, you know, I, I keep myself informed, I know about science, whatever. And I read the New York Times every morning, and I haven't seen any article on the New York Times about UFOs. Therefore, I can know that the topic is bunk. You know, and now you you will say, well, you can say well, to the skeptical people, okay, now now the New York Times have, have printed such a such a story, and. It's another interesting development. Uh, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but I feel that the skeptical movement has become almost irrelevant by now. What well, I think a couple of, in some ways, I think they've kind of like, it's weird, like they need to worry about other things now. They don't have time <laughs> to worry about UFOs. They have to worry about fake news and everything else. And that kind of brings me to my next question is, so if it's not the New York Times... I mean, what the fuck is it? What is what? What would be? What would make everyone stop nowadays? Because I feel the like the scientific community and academia. Would that would it be? Yeah. Would, is that what would it be like? I so who that. like Stephen Hawking? Isn't he dead? Is he dead? I yeah, forget. He died. yeah, they shipped him to Mars on that little red hot rod. <laughs> He's at the Mars labor <laughs> camp fighting the insects. <laughs> yeah. Or bastard. I don't know. I don't know because you're, you you guys are touching on really interesting points about the problems with, with the concept of disclosure. disclosure well, yeah, we've like lost faith in everything. You can't even trust video, you can't trust audio, you yeah, can't yeah, trust the, the news, you can't trust politicians, you can't trust yeah. fucking anything. We've entered the, yeah. the realm of you believe what you want. And deep it's, fake it's, is it's, just it's, starting. Yeah, and so in my, in my opinion, we've, we're, we're, we're kind of like tiptoeing into the realm of believe, you believe what you want. I well, mean, we're back, we're, we might as well be back in the fucking dark ages Believe in whatever you want, because now there's too much information. Red, Red was just sort of alluding to that before we started recording, and I'm glad you mentioned that, because I wanted him to expand a little bit on how he was just <laughs> talking about us having to wake up into this illusion where nothing is real, in a way. Like, it, And you're right, because no matter what the topic is, there's so much information, people are just cherry-picking their sides. And yeah. I mean, I remember talking about this before we started this podcast, like seven or eight years ago, expecting everybody to meet in the center to That's some true. truth. That's true. And that it's like, happen. it's worse. It's just everybody going to whatever side they want to reinforce their belief. Yeah. Exactly. So that's going to start to subdivide, I think, into like, that's going to just fragment into the total dissolution of society. <laughs> Well, yes. yeah, something that, that, that we used to talk about. I think I brought it up in, in one of our uh, uh, old uh, interviews that suppose that tomorrow some NASA scientist announced that there was some killer asteroid that was 100% sure going to hit the Earth in, I don't know, five years or something. We could probably, that, and we, that we could do something about it, but that all the governments in the world will have to put get together, work in some kind of plan in order in order to save humanity. Not I true. guarantee you, like four years later, there were still people who will be, you know, debating whether you know the story was true or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, and you can yeah. start to see it, motherfucker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, a society cannot exist without any kind of. Um, I don't want to say faith, but I want to trust. Trust in your in in your basic societal institutions. institutions. That'll yeah. be when we turn the control over to the machines and we pray into the algos. 
I mean, in and some ways, the trust is are. really bad. And the really others off. are probably fucking racist. We're already this doing is it. A problem. Are we not? Well, I mean, yeah, in a lot when, of ways, when, when, you are. You're, yeah, you're using I mean, algos to, to go, meet people. If to, I have to go to a meeting, and, and I don't know where, where the address is, I, I, I use Google Maps. You know, I, I trust myself to the algorithms to get there safely. Yeah, or to pay your bills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, or or to check to check the news, to check the the, the weather. Uh, yeah, as, as some people have started to allude that, yeah, where the, the 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 next step will be to to, to the next step will be when the AI algos start writing the algos, and we don't even know what's going on because they're using some weird machine language. Yeah, well, that'll be good. <laughs> That'll be good. I think yeah. it'll be okay. I mean, I honestly, I'm getting to a point where I think I trust the algos more than people. Not, I, I, I know, I'm not sure about that because those those algorithms still have to be programmed. Yeah, yeah, with but bias. No, they're going to start with, with programming the unintentional themselves. Bias. Yeah, but they'll program that out in like the fourth generation, even if it takes a thousand generations of this. Not self if they don't replicated. want it programmed out. I mean, this is this is the whole problem. I'm the people that are about, controlling no, no. the algos. I'm talking about when the algos start making when the when the AI starts making. Well, its what if own that algos. creates its own bias completely? You know, then it's, well, it probably then won't it's be racist in, though. In they'll just hate humans in general. <laughs> we'll yeah. have defeated discrimination right before we get wiped out of existence. <laughs> well, the computer will accept all the bias, the, all the different things about all the different races as fact, not debated in like political. You know, in the early, right in the early ones, in the early renditions, the computer will but, just log all these things and say but it they're could better be, at this and not at that. That's yeah, but it could. It nah, yeah, but it, it's going to improve on itself so quick. It'll be like you'll be doing like a thousand generations a day. So in like two weeks. It should have worked all the I mean, there's, it's going to be a messy two weeks. I'm not, you know, it's not a utopia. So they don't get full control have, of the have, guns in that two week period. No, they've yeah, already got, at, at this yeah. point, they've already got control of everything. And you're, yeah. you know, you just hold on. I had on. this idea of some kind of like a sitcom, like the, the Netflix, The Good Place, which, which in my opinion is one of the best uh, and, and smartest comedies. Out there, in, in called the, the good the good place. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the idea that yeah the the, the AIs do to cop take over the world and everybody at, obviously at first freak out, but then they realize that the next day uh, the world has turned into a paradise. You know, <laughs> uh, global warming is solved. There's no pollution. Everybody is rich. Nobody has to go to work. You know, everybody. Everybody has everything they ever wanted, but then they realize that actually that is worse, worse than uh, the suffering, worse than worse than artificial intelligence exterminating exterminating humans will be to make us irrelevant. You know, like humans saying, "Hey, you know what's going on? Oh, you have uh, spaceships to go into space. Cool. You know, we want to go and explore." And the eyes, no, 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 no. We got this, you know. You go and, and play with your Xbox, human. <laughs> yeah. You just like the little kids. You just like, come on, yeah, downstairs. Exactly. Go on. We're doing adult things here. They become pets. Exactly. Yeah. We're already like pets. I mean, we're already breeding in captivity. But like, why? Extent. Why does the AI want humans to be their pets? I don't know. Why do you have a pet? Oh, the same I don't. reason that, that humans <laughs> like cats. Oh, you... You you kind of have a pet dog, sort of, in a roundabout kind of way. No, I have fish. There you go. Why do you have fish? Because if cool. negative energy cat, is cat. cast towards you, supposedly the fish, <laughs> the fish will the suck fish. it up. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Wow. It's good to All have right. open water cats in your house. It really is. Is that why you have cats? Just to suck up the negative energy? They heal. They're, they heal. They're pretty healing, too. Do you walk yeah. your cats? No. My cat. I would have. I would have if they. If I caught it when they were younger, I would have done it. Yeah. If you had caught it, if you caught it if when I was younger, them. did you catch yeah, the cats? Well, you know what I mean. If I would have caught the concept, oh, the when concept. I was younger, yeah. That's I like always... the concept of getting him to go to the bathroom in the fucking toilet, right? My buddy Pat. Shout out to Pat. I don't think he'll ever listen to this. But my buddy Pat back home, their cat shits in the toilet. Oh yeah, totally. I it's don't think great. It's that hard. To I, teach it's him. no. He said it wasn't too bad. It took like a month and a half. Can you do it? 
I probably could. I just never. I'll took pay the time. you. I'll pay you to teach my cat to go to the bathroom and toilet. That could be a little <laughs> side business. You just put their litter box in your toilet in a little dish. Yeah, you like the, they have this whole little concept. You like yeah. you like you put the, the side them. and then you like raise it up with a book mm-hmm. every couple of days till it's like the same height. Depends then, on how smart your cat is. Yeah, and how old probably too. You could probably just explain it to a really smart cat, yeah, and they would like, just start doing it. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so. Should I flush? I think cats are smarter than us. If it's actually. brown, flush it down. So maybe the AI, maybe the AI could, could control the shits in the streets of LA. Then, if you know, if cats probably are not. Dogs. That's a human problem. Yeah, I mean, they'd have to start controlling us on where we go. Hey, we no, can't, I mean, we're just, talking about training like, cats, and we, we can't, can't let you guys outside. You shit in the streets. That's <laughs> it. Now we're confined to a zoo-like atmosphere. <laughs> Ugh, this is not a. This is not good. The captivity will just get this. The, the captivity will just get, you know, more and more solid until the machines take over. And what if the, the, the answer to the UFO problem would only be revealed to artificial intelligence? You know, yeah. what if the only way to communicate with a non-human intelligence is through another non-human intelligence? Well, then we're fucked. Well, not necessarily. I mean... Uh, and and I know that Jacques Vallée, I mean, I've been reading Jacques Vallée's Forbidden Science journals. There's four of, four of them so far, you know, and it spans from 1960, no, sorry, 1957 to 1999. Wow. You know, so four decades. And, and right now they're, they're my favorite UFO books of all time, you know, bar none. One of the things that he explores is because he's a computer scientist and he was using artificial intelligence to catalog and, and, and analyze UFO data since the 1970s. <laughs> the 1970s. I mean, of course, this is a guy who was using email in the 1970s, you know, because he was part, among other things, of, of the uh, uh, ARPANET program, you know, the one that was uh, developed by, by, by the defense by America, the, the uh, United States defense, uh, defense program, yeah, to create uh, some kind of internet. I and he was Al Gore. In- yeah, he, he uh, among other things, he was part of, 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 of Senate committee hearings that informed Al Gore about ARPA, about uh, and, 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 all those, and all that stuff. But anyway, yeah, uh, I, 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 it's probable that he and some people like him are still using AI in order to parse through the data. And maybe, I don't know, I mean, how about we create AI in order to try to communicate with the, with the UFO system or to try to take out the bias out of, of uh, human sightings, human yeah, reports. But if it's all consciousness, then we might be better off just smoking more DMT or something like that, well, or you meditating. Know, you, know, or... you know, that's uh, yeah, that's definitely the way that I that I roll nowadays. You know, the more that I Wait, read what? about this. Yeah, I think the last time we talked to you, I think we last time we talked to you, yeah, just you had an experience down in work. Mexico, yeah, and it was kind of a dud. Yeah, and I and I had another one. Which was another another dud. dud. What? <laughs> yeah. Have you had a non dud yet? <laughs> no, not yet. All right, motherfucker, you got to come to Canada. You come crash no. at my place. Darren wants to take and you. I in guarantee it. you, we will not dud out. <laughs> and I now have the facilities I can put you up. You can come and crash at my place. Yeah, well, you know, I'm still uh, open to try it, although. I'm also, sorry, of the opinion that psychedelics is just one of the avenues in which we can, one can get, uh, gain insight into those uh, inner realms. You know, I agree. Maybe it's like a, like a, the 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 freeway, you know, that were like, like the expressway. But sometimes, you know, there are people who get sick. You like the sometimes you like the back roads and the scenic route. Yeah, sometimes the, back the roads. important thing about the journey is those yeah. back roads uh, and the, the things that happen during those scenic routes. Yeah. So yeah. you talked about you talked about you were a little skeptical about. It seemed like the whatever division of the U.S. or let's say global government 
government or uh, Air Force, military, having access to crashed or other technologies. But what, so, so what about all the, you know, the, the stuff that we think as a community that, that humans are flying around in some unidentified craft? Like, do, and what do you think about it being in the private industry then and the stuff like that Ben, ben Rich talks, you know, all his, you know, infamous quotes right. and all that stuff. Like, do you think that yeah, it is separated out into, is a, you know, is a breakaway civil, civilization? Because, I mean, it, you know, this stuff has been changing over the last few years so much. I mean, has your opinion on that changed at all? Not sure. And, and, and yeah, definitely, uh, that's still a very provocative quote that from Ben, ben Rich when he said, we now have the technology to uh, uh, bring ET home. Yeah, or whatever right. you can imagine we can do it and we've built it or whatever. I mean, those are pretty pretty intense yeah. quotes for being 20 years old, at least 25 years old. That was the old. 90s, wasn't yeah. it? That's, yeah. yeah, I guess that was 20 years. Yeah, yeah and, and along, alongside uh, TTSA's uh, development, there's also been uh, other developments of... Um, surrounding the patents that have been awarded to uh, an ing a scientist that works for the U.S. Navy, a guy by the name of Salvatore Cesar Pais, you know? And, and you check into those patents, and this guy is basically pat uh, patenting... Uh, uh, internal internal mass stuff. reduction device stuff? Yeah, mass and, and things that can almost like uh, warp space and time, and he has also patent, uh, patented uh, some kind of like uh, fusion reactor systems. And, and also this, the most important one is he has allegedly patented uh, uh, some kind of like, um, uh, uh, what is the name of this? When, when it doesn't offer resistance, uh, uh, superconducting materials that can operate uh, above uh, almost like a, a normal temperatures, you know, if, uh, because if you can get that, you know, you can pretty much do anything. And there been, there's been investigators looking into these patents, uh, you know, like Ty Tyler Rogerway, who, who writes for The Drive. Mm -hmm. and, and seeing that and saying, what the hell? Because this, this technology is clearly science fiction. He's shown those patents to, to scientists who understand the, the, the implications, who understand the, the, the technical data that is inside those papers. And all of them say, well, this is clearly bullshit. You know, this, is, this cannot be true. But it came I, from the Navy, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll get. I get. I'll get. I'll get to that. I mean, I. I also show. Uh, I follow a scientist in Twitter, Miguel Alcubierre. You know, probably the the name. His last name may ring a bell because every time, uh, you know, TV shows talk about a way to create a functional warp drive. You know, some something that could actually fold space in ways that we could go to another star system in a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. They talk about the Alcubierre warp drive, you know, about these uh, theories that this guy developed in the 90s, in, in which he showed that technically you could create something that could fold, you know, space and time in a way that you could make it like a space-time bubble around the ship, you know, that could go and, 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 and in a way negate, uh, the time and distance. The, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're pulling, exactly. you're pulling it towards you instead of you traveling through it. You create gravity exactly. bubbles. Yeah. Exactly. Gravity bubbles. And, and I, and, uh, I show, I, I sent a link to, to Miguel Alcubierre about those patents saying, okay, what do you think of this? You know? And, and he said, well, I think it's, Clearly not true, because if this guy claims he has created such a, a such uh, such a system that that can that can uh, negate gravity, you know he he 
he will be awarded the Nobel Prize. <laughs> so then the, the question Only is, why is, it the US, why is it that the U.S. Navy uh, requested the, the U.S. Office of Patents to be awarded, to, to grant those patents to one of their scientists? One of the things that they said, well, you know, one of the, those naval officers who, who sent the request to the Office of Patents is they told them, we have basis to, to, to we know for a fact, or we have information that the China has been working in this technology. So we need this patent because otherwise we're going to, United States is going to fall behind. Ugh, those are just those are lame arguments. I mean, both that argument and and the oh. other argument that you know the guy would have a Nobel Prize is ridiculous. I mean, yeah, but if China patented it first, that would be bad. My question is if yeah, but, if but, in him patenting it, it, will it open up development of these technologies or will it stop it completely? Exactly. exactly. That's my question. Yeah. Well, patent if, patent if, trolls. If, right? What if the patents are just? Uh, uh, a game. What is just just exactly. part of an operation? How to hide order- the technology, right? No, no. What if? What if? What if? Grand, uh, Grand, hear me out. What if the technology doesn't really exist, and the United States wants their enemies to waste precious time and resources, trying you know, to pursuing, to the moon. pursuing, you know, some pie in the sky thing that will never will never uh, really work. Like getting to the moon. Some people have said that the real reason behind the Ronald Reagan's Star Wars program, you know, back in the 80s, all those uh, the defense, space defense systems, you know, anti-missile lasers that they were supposedly going to put on space, right? Yep. And they never managed to actually develop the technology. But some people say that the real reason behind the program was to make the Soviets think that Star Wars was going to happen, so they had to had to keep up. And then the 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 pro the, the purpose of the program was to bankrupt the Soviet Union. Which yeah, that's pretty tricky. Have. I mean, that's tricky. I understand the concept, well, but I mean, you're taking that. a chance that somebody doesn't make a breakthrough and like and just go way past where you are. I mean, and, and the mystery of still who's flying around in those massive black triangles. I mean, it, you know, it's not all aliens, so maybe they just know. inflate me a big balloon. I think what Red's saying sure. is true. Uh, yeah, to a it, point. exactly. Yeah. It, uh, Greg, Darren's touching an interesting point because in Forbidden Science Volume Four. I still haven't finished it, but uh, Valet talks to several people, you know, in the government, especially one who was part of the Senate Office of Appropriations. You know, the, those guys of those guys who were supposed to overlook the black budget programs, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is the name? Richard D'Amato. Yeah, and Richard D'Amato was absolutely certain that. Um, those Belgian triangles that were that were seen uh, in the 1990s yeah. were uh, man-made secret prototypes, you know, operated uh, by by NATO with no jurisdiction and you know totally illegally by NATO. And I heard, you know, that maybe these these were some kind of like um, rigid, uh, lighter lighter than air structures, you know. Which had their propulsion system on top, so people wouldn't see it. So, and and people were testing it. It's a really interesting idea, and and after reading this, yeah, I have to consider it more and more. I still have problems with it because uh, testing such a type of technology on a populated era, area, on a foreign country, in my opinion, represents a lot of problems. You know, what if one of those you know, uh, dirigibles suffer some malfunction. What if it crashes down on some? Yeah. Or what if, uh, what if the plane's coming and trying to intercept it? I mean, you know, what if, what if the wrong person sees it and they've got a direct connection to, you know, fly those guys in and intercept it? I mean, that's a a risk too. And then knock down, especially if you can only float away like a balloon. I mean, yeah. 
but more and more uh, forbidden science, this, these journals talk about how many of the UFO cases that we revere and take from, for granted could have been part of some, of some obscure uh, psyops operation, you know, by some, some of some American agency for including, uh, including intrusions to, to United States air force bases and nuclear silos. Ah, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. there's, there's a passage in which, uh, Kit Green, Dr. Kit Green, uh, was part of the CIA. He was, he was like the a, Fox a Mulder, wasn't he kind of? Kind of, yeah, well, or maybe you're talking, thinking of uh, Ron Pandolfi, who was kind of like his successor. Right, okay. But Kit Green tells Ballet in one of the, 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 part, of the part of the journals, I think it was in the 19, I want to say 1980s, that he, in a trip to Thailand, he met a guy who was like a, some kind of like mercenary that used to work uh, for any kind of people who will, you know, pay his contract. And this guy told Kit Green that one of the things he did was uh, entering into the airspace of nuclear silos using silent helicopters as some kind of, like, program. I would like to think that maybe some kind of program to try to use uh, detectors, you know, inside of in, in, inside those uh, secret helicopters, or maybe it was some kind of psyop operation to try to see if they could do the same in a Russian base. I don't know, but it, it raises the question about many of the cases that we take from for granted, such as uh, Rendlesham. Yeah, you know? yeah, and the Which Belgian to, one, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe maybe we need to entertain the possibility that Rendlesham was. Some kind of psyop run by 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 the near, the the United States on their own people. Well, that would explain Pope's you know role in it because he seems to be, and he comes straight out of the government. Mm-hmm. So was Pope always involved in Rendlesham? I don't know enough about UFOs to know. Like, uh, I know we had him on the show to talk about Rendlesham, but I don't know if he was like on boots on the ground. Well, he like was in the UK. One. Like he was kind of like the Fox Mulder of the UK way back before that. A lot of Fox Mulder. Sure, but he was today. involved with, with the Minister of Defense uh, UFO desk until the 1990s, and, and Rendlesham happened in 1980. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was the other way around. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. So, I mean, uh, we had the Octagon so doctor I, in the chats, and he was saying that he wonders how far ahead the he wonders what kind of medical patents the U.S. military has for like editing oof. genes and stuff like that. Yeah. Twenty and back program. What's that? I don't know. Corey Good talks about the twenty oh, and God. back program. Let's not get into that. <laughs> it's funny though. It is funny. That they sign you up, they take you when you're like 17. I mean, the last show we did was- You do 20 years out there and you come back and they put you back in your 17-year-old body again and off you go to live your life with all these- After doing doing 20 years on Mars? Yeah. Fighting the insects? Uh, Yeah, if that's what you're doing. Do you have to fight the insects or is there other people that fight (laughs) the insects while you work? I'm sure they have really cool machines that they drive around. I can handle them driving a machine. Yeah. So it wouldn't be that bad. That sounds great. I have trouble with the Corey Good stuff, though. Yeah. I mean, the last episode was kind of, we had a couple people comment that the last episode was a little Corey Goodish. I just think it's fun. The it's last like episode? Star Trek. Which last episode? Stivelman. Oh, Red Pill Junkie did a review of that. It was a fantastic review of that movie. Oh, did he? And and well, I don't I don't think that was near Corey Good at all. I don't. I, I'm was, just. Don't, not, don't, it wasn't even. No, no. I'm defenses. just expressing my. Okay. I think it was pretty normal, that one. I mean, how, how could it even be? That was pretty normal as far as ufology goes. I mean, that wasn't even, it was more of a human interest story, really. I thought so, yeah. too. Maybe when we started talking about inner earth and exploring. You Did know, we get into earth. that? Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, because to... Alan Stiebelman wants to, He's that's his next project. Eh? He wants to go check hey. out the inner earth. What? Did you say, eh? Hey? Yeah. Nice little sneak in the air. Uh, I would go to in, inner earth with Alan Stiebelman. Yeah. Set it up. 
Ian Red? Yeah, uh, sounds uh, like an interesting uh, project. You know, uh, the idea of at least in, in, in investigating these myths. You know, because they're everywhere. You know, it'd be All way cooler. Myths, um, lost cities. You know, in, in in the Amazon or in the Andes. You know, and and even here in Mexico, the, the, there's also talked about. Uh, Hidden tunnels. Well, here in, here in Mexico, in, in in the city of Teotihuacan, there's all these, uh, uh, you know, hidden tunnels be, be beneath the, the pyramids, beneath the temples. You know, uh, and, and and archaeologists are still using small robots to try to investigate those, those tunnels because they're still trying to find out. Where the the tombs of the of the rulers of the of the of the rulers of that city are 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 hidden, you know, uh, and and yeah, I mean, I am the, of the opinion that myths always have a kernel of truth, you know, even something like Atlantis, you know, that's a, something that like so so outlandish, but thanks to people like Ram Hancock, you know, and something like that. Can be seen into thrown into a, a new perspective, something that it could be plausible. The idea, oh yeah, well, maybe some kind of really advanced civilization that just was destroyed by the end of the the Younger Dryas, you know, and maybe that was what gave rise to the myth of Atlantis. So yeah, I'm really really interested in see and see what uh, uh, Alan Stiebelman will come up next you know maybe 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 i can uh, uh ask him for a job you know the yeah. work you should do yeah, it yeah, man yeah. you should fucking ask him for a job yeah maybe you like that for him or yeah. something yeah. Yeah. yeah i would chase him down i'm just the entrance to inner earth how come it can't be in like well if you're gonna storm area Bolivia. 51 why don't you storm like you know everybody oh flash yeah. mobs this entrance entrance to the inner earth yeah, yeah. <laughs> so everybody on their smartphone it's fucking cold it's, it you takes get the three weeks to get down there you get the coordinates and, the and you get three I mean, days and you have to be there and you gotta go through Antarctica or oh. the North Pole that's cold man I don't know maybe they're not maybe they're not all there if maybe we're gonna storm like place some places we should storm maybe the Vatican maybe there's one here in Banff if we're gonna storm some place we should storm the Vatican no uh, <laughs> that's worse than Area 50 or the Smithsonian have you heard of any medical devices or any of that technology in, in the UFO research, Red? Well, we Back know to that, that question this in the guy, chat. Uh, Tyler, you know, that, that anonymous individual that was the, kind of the center of uh, Diana Pasulka's book, American Cosmic, we know that he has a, a, a biomedical company uh, that allegedly he uses his... Uh, I don't know what you call it, a gift, his ability to receive information from the aliens in order to... to, to, to Diagnose? Get these patents. Oh, you know? wow. Who is this? I'm sorry. There's a book that came out called Cos American Cosmic or Cosmic America or something like that, and this guy in there, uh, he's talking about Tyler as a biomedical company, and he okay. receives info on patents. Well, that's the idea. He, he, I guess you could use the word download. Yeah. Right. He gets into that, that kind of like, um, that's just a new word for channeling though, right? Pretty much. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, you're right. You know, I mean, I'm using euphemisms for what used to be called channeling in the 19th century. You know, the same thing. Now, what's interesting is to learn that there's people in those, in those, uh, respectable companies that are actually still using the, uh, that kind of uh, methods. But maybe we shouldn't be so surprised, you know? I mean, how many 500 company, you know, executives still, you know, check out their horoscope, you know? Only, if, the they're, only if they're billionaires. The millionaires don't bother, but the billionaires do. Exactly, yeah, I, I, I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah. Maybe there's something to that, you know? I mean... Uh, in the 1970s, in the 1970s, there were all those people who wanted to uh, commercially exploit psychic phenomena. You know that they, they thought that they wanted to 
they're going to come up with some kind of like commercial application for all the research that was conducted by the Stanford Research Institute, you know, SRI, when they were under the contract by, by, by the Pentagon. And then, the mili- the, and, and then they went through different phases. Hal Putoff was part of it yeah. at one point with, with Russell Targ. Then Putoff uh, got out. He went to Austin and, and to, to create his own company and get involved with, with Zero Point Research and all that. And then uh, the Stargate program was under the supervision of, uh, of uh, uh, Dr. Ed May. And there were a lot, a lot of people who thought that all these things, uh, back when Psychotronic was uh, a very, a very uh, uh, in vogue term, that they, they were going to use this, uh, this research to come up with some kind of like actual applicable technology. And as far as we know, they didn't manage to do that. Although maybe we have to entertain the possibility that they actually did, but they, they are keeping it on the wraps. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, you never know. What about the you deep know? state aspect to this whole UFO thing over the last couple of years? Like Hil- Hillary and Podesta were going to be the disclosure, you know, uh, politicians. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. that that kind of got ruined. Um, and then you know, and then the, and then the TT, TTSA comes out after, like they end up coming out. The CIA, you know, the CIA ends up doing this anyways, almost like a backup plan. And then Trump comes out with the Space Force. I mean, is there a, a bit of a? Do you think there's a bit of a battle there on over disclosure? A good question. And. Part of the narrative that has been used by Elizondo and the Long, even even that was part of one of the epi- one of the episodes in their series on identified. I, I, I want to say this is the last episode when the Long and Elizondo go to the Pentagon to talk to uh, the people who are still running that program, you know, and. Elizondo is, is, is shown saying that some of the people he used to work with weren't too happy by how he quit and how he went public with all of this. So, yeah, they want to maybe uh, propagate the narrative that there are several factions at play here. That one one of those factions, maybe the old timers, you know, uh, people who are in their 70s or 80s, uh, and, and they don't want any kind of disclosure. And maybe there are some, a, 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 a new guard of young guns who are every so often trying to push for disclosure. This is something that even Grant Cameron has talked about, how every every few years, there are these initiatives and people going and, 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 and talking to someone like uh, Robert Emenegger and offering him uh, the footage of this craft that allegedly, uh, you know, landed at Holloman Air Force Base uh, in the 1970s. Yeah. No? And they're always saying that and, and they're always uh, promising uh, the big piece the big, uh, the, the 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 big clue or or, or the smoking of the gun, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the smoking gun, and they never they never produce it, right? And and maybe you could say, well, there there are people who are pushing for disclosure, there are others who don't, and every and, and because of political turmoil, or all, all, all those plans never managed to pan out. Uh, Emenegger's uh, contacts in the Air Force use the excuse of Nixon's Watergate as to why they couldn't go on with, with, with their plans to release this information to the public. And then I, I read in, in, in Valet's Forbidden Science how uh, whatever material UFO hardware were in the hands of, of the Air Force, they found it out by the, the time of the 
Iran Contra scandal mm. because they didn't want a, a journalist, you know, poking around and finding out things. Yeah. So, and 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 these people are also alluding to the possibility that the big secret is not really in the hands of the government, but it's in the hands of private contractors. You know that at one point, uh, you know that that smoking gun, that you know UFO hardware, those you know pickled aliens, they were transferred from uh, military facilities to the warehouses of, of private contractors. Skunk you know, away, away from the public scrutiny, you know, safe from FOAI requests like those made by, by investigators like John Greenwald. Yeah. And, you know, maybe part of that, you could say that uh, a bit of evidence to that effect is uh, when in that December 2017 article that we've been discussing so much, they mentioned Robert Bigelow. And they mentioned how Robert Bigelow won that uh, ATIP contract or yeah. OSAP. And one of the things he did is to expand his facilities at his Bigelow Aerospace company in order to store uh, materials. They never <laughs> explain what kind of materials. They never explain how big these materials are that they need to, 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 to build a new warehouse. You know, I or, mean, or, or that he was friends with Harry Reid, who gave him the money, or yeah, not, not who gave him, but you know, it was kind of some kind of honeypot, honeypot, honeypot deal, right? In order for in, in exchange for campaign money, I don't know. That's why I don't understand why they're so sloppy about this whole thing. I mean, they use they use fake pictures in a lot of their in a lot of their propaganda and advertising. They lie. Oh. They lied about some of the name changes and stuff like that. They, you know. There's other lies in there. There's there's questions about Lou, and then there's a bunch of people in the UFO community that don't ask all the hard questions. Like, what? Why is it so sloppy? Well, maybe that maybe that's the intended result they wanted. You know, yeah. they want they they, all that the, they, they want, want all the questions, all the all the open end open ended uh, mysteries or whatever. Yeah, maybe maybe there are some people in the government who, for whatever reasons, like. To see ufologies running around like chickens without a head, you know, uh, pursuing first Majestic 12 and then the, the 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 alien autopsy videos, and now we're running around uh, uh, ATIP uh, propaganda. You know, <laughs> what is the what is the ultimate goal? I don't I do not know. Uh, maybe we'll learn about it. 20 years down the road, you know, maybe, maybe in the end we'll realize that uh, it was all part of some kind of like psychological operation, you know, uh, the, uh, that maybe doesn't have anything to do with, with UFOs. It's possible. You know, the same, the same way that uh, all, all the myths surrounding the Dulce underground base that started to circulate in ufology in the 1980s, the real reason behind those those myths is was to to uh, veer the attention of Paul Benowitz and all the people who will listen to him away from the secret pro the secret programs that were being carried out by several agencies at the Kirtland Air Force Base and the Manzano. Uh, weapon storage facility, you know things like uh, when they were the developing systems to uh, blind uh, Russian satellites using very powerful lasers. You know that will they will they will shoot the beam in order to like fry the optical sensors of these satellites, and that technology was also used in order to to improve the accuracy of uh, telescopes here on Earth. You know, that was a, a great advance for uh, modern, modern astronomy. That had nothing to do with, with UFOs, uh, but it was one of the things that we're doing there. Yeah, it also, it also created a whole whack of, you know, gray warrior conspiracies, underground bases. I mean, it was also, a, 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 you know, a, an opportunity to discredit a whole bunch of other uh, phenomena and mysteries. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, the fact that the United States government doesn't understand the UFO phenomenon doesn't mean they won't try to exploit the phenomenon for their own purposes. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Well, do you think that this is more of a, like, uh, my sense is, is that there, the, some of the intention behind this could be to unite the world under some kind of global, you know, threat, maybe global program money there, they're, you know, there, it's a way to pull money. Like there isn't enough money getting pulled through the military industrial complex already, but now into this program, yeah, you know, fake space lasers, <clears throat> you know, doing all kinds of, I mean, I don't know. They've wasted so much black budget money, but there's, you know, maybe the drug money is running out, you know, maybe they're stopping the, they're getting busted for too many, you know, they need another way to funnel everybody's money into black projects. It's interesting. You mentioned that because, uh, Again, in another passage of Forbidden Science, you can see I'm obsessed with these books, right? <laughs> are they are they actual books or are they papers like from uh, articles yeah, from? Papers. Yeah. No, no, they're they're big, fat, you know, four hundred plus uh, uh, books. Can people get uh, a hold of them at all? Or sure, sure. yeah, yeah they, they're order. online. Yeah, yeah. The last one was released uh, in 2019. Oh, okay, okay. And in one of those. Actually, I think it was in, in, in the last one or the third one. Uh, this guy, Dr. Kit Green, the guy who used to work for the CIA, he went to look for uh, a secret Pentagon program. Uh, you know, that was not, wasn't even listed in, the one, in their SAA, SAAPs, right? Mm -hmm. Their SAPs. Uh, because everybody, some of, the, some of his contacts used to tell him, oh, that's the UFO group. So he went and knocked on the door of these guys, and it turned out the program had nothing to do with UFOs, but they were developing what he called low observable craft, basically stealth helicopters that were used for uh, anti-drug operations. Anti, in quotes, anti. <laughs> sure. Yeah, may, or maybe they were used for pro drug operations yeah. in the yeah. contra deal. Running drugs, mm -hmm. but but you see, you know how even even people in the know, they they are also sometimes looking for answers and and they 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 don't find them, you know. And, and I feel maybe that's the case with people like Hal Putoff and 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 Chit Green and and people who are with with. TSA. We here are, are assuming that these guys have all the answers, you know, that, that they're going to release them to the public. Maybe they don't have a clue yet. You know, maybe... Maybe, maybe they're on the edge. I feel like they're on the edge, but they might not be in the know. You know, they're being used or something. I don't know. Yeah, but compartmentalization is very effective. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very effective and at the same time... But they're very effective to keep the secret, but not necessarily to make... Uh, advances in the programs, you know. Uh, for example, one of the another another thing that the ballet studied is was this uh, secret uh, project that was run by McDonnell Douglas in the 1970s. They were trying to figure out a way to the, the the UFO propulsion system, right? Oh, and get this, Stanton Friedman was that part of that program really oh yeah when he was a yeah, nuclear yeah. physicist or nuclear no yeah yeah yeah. nuclear physicist famous uh ufologist you know the late stanton friedman was part of a secret uh program run by mcdonald douglas uh that were trying to f find out how U uh, ufos run hmm. but here's the thing uh eventually According to one of the administrators who talked to Valet, they didn't get anywhere with it, right? And 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 Valet told told that guy, why didn't you come to meet uh, me and Heineck? Because we were the ones with the only reliable global database of sightings, right? Because these guys, the the these these private UFO program, they were trying to get a hold of UFO da data through civilian UFO groups like APRO, KUFOS, and all, and all that, right? Yeah. So maybe that's another thing that uh, 
that that's behind to the stars, you know, that they've been talking about releasing some kind of uh, phone app that people could do- download and keep in their phones so they could send their reports directly to, to the stars. You know, basically they want to be, uh, to the stars want to be the, 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 the new MUFON, right? Well, my buddy Michael from, from Vancouver wants us to, uh, he wants to create an app very similar to that one, but you can also triangulate sightings on it. Like if you're on the app and you saw something, you could, you know, other not, people would be not notified and then, uh, no. and then you could, you know, everybody could triangulate that sighting, you know, and then, and then report well, it. I mean, what, what people like us don't often realize is that intelligence groups, secret groups, they are always desperate to get their hands on that information. Yeah. They don't get that information by, uh, by then. They, so that sometimes they have to knock on the doors of UFO groups like NICAP, APRO, yeah. uh, MUFON. MUFOS, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Valet mentions in, in his journals that after uh, uh, J. Allen Hynek died, the, the offices of, of KUFOS were uh, ransacked, and so wow. many of their files were lost. Wow, that's crazy. And, and maybe what, what these guys, the To The Stars, want is want, they want to consolidate themselves as the number one UFO organization in the world. Although now they're calling, they're not calling themselves a UFO. Group, yeah, so that's what? another issue. UAP is? Did they go to UAP? Oh, is they, they just the bypass one? the whole thing. Now there's some media. Yeah, a new one. Yeah. Because the intelligence it? community, they want to bypass the the annoying UFO groups. <laughs> the annoying the people asking all the tough to... questions. As you do. Yeah. So they yeah. they bypass the UFO people and the UAP people. Yeah. So what? Okay. I they just go. bypass yeah. the whole phenomenon. What's the now it's What's now the they're acronym? just in. Entertainment, uh, what, what do they call themselves now? A conglomerate. <laughs> what? <laughs> so do they pick up the UFO people and the UAP people, and now they're a conglomerate of those and the TTSA people? The Tata well, for nows? The stars is a, to the stars, it's a, it's, a weird, it's a weird hybrid, man. It's a weird animal. Because they say that they want to fund their serious UFO research through entertainment venues. Yeah. Right? Which, oh, boy. Yeah, so you don't know what to believe on This is a shed, slippery you know? slope. Yeah. So they're yeah, going to be a special sketchy. effects company. Yeah. Even, even you know, even Alan Hynek at some point entertained the idea of funding his KUFOS group uh, through entertainment. They wanted to, to produce some documentaries starring him they wanted to produce, get this, they wanted to produce some kind of like TV show, like uh, 20 questions, uh, you know, about uh, uh, surrounding, about UFOs, huh. you know, some kind of like uh, uh, one of those uh, prize uh, contest shows. And, and, and the, the, the people who approached him were guys who <laughs> had a, an, another show called Tic Tac. <laughs> So there's a, 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 a literal interesting synchronicity. Yeah, that is but yeah, every, every time, every time UFO groups want to use entertainment to try to fund their serious investigations, they always lose credibility. Look what happened to MUFON with their Hangar One uh, yeah. TV show. Yeah, right. Everybody said, "What the hell?" You know, this is this is not. Uh, uh, Serial scientific investigation. MUFON has become a, a carnival show. Really? And how can how can we take uh, to the stars uh, seriously? What at the same time they're they're also peddling fiction Bob books. Well, fiction I books thought and... we could take MUFON more seriously than to the stars. I didn't know MUFON was a joke. I was still under the impression MUFON was like the go-to. Like, I mean, look, from my perspective as a non-UFO guy, I'm looking at To the Stars as a fucking joke from day one. Here's the thing with MUFON. Uh, MUFON uh, is the problem with all big organizations. At one point, their, their sole reason to exist is to keep on existing, you know? <laughs> to keep on like the government. Uh, gathering funds. 
to pay their board of directors, you know, to pay their offices, to pay their rent, right? And when, and then they're, because of that, they're fall victim to a lot of shenanigans. Like, for example, when Bob Bigelow came to their offices with a, with a checkbook open and saying, okay, how much? I'm going to fund your, your, re, your project, your activities for a limited amount of time. And that's when they, they started their, what they called it, their star team. Remember? Their yep, star yep. was, you know, that yep. was all uh, uh, paid by Robert Bigelow. And then Robert Bigelow, according to some researchers uh, like Jack Brewer, they also uh, told MUFON, oh, by the way, you guys have a, are sitting on a lot of very interesting uh, information of alien abductions. Uh, can I get a, a, get, a, get a copy of that? And apparently they, he did get, get a copy of that, which was kind of like illegal because that information, some of those people who, who gave that information to MUFON, you know, the abductees, they did so under the assumption that it wasn't going to be shared by anyone. You know, they were going to kept, be kept uh, anonymous. And then yeah, there's the other side. I think, I think the other side of it was they, then they also wanted, I think there was less public data available after the funding as well, right? From the star team or whatever. It seemed to me like there was an issue with not being able to allow information out to the public. Like they used to. Right. I mean, and, and even today, you know, I mean, you go to the MUFON and they will tell you, yeah, all the information that we gather, all the reports are proprietary information. You know, you, you, you if right after we finish the recording, right? proprietary, proprietary, a big ass gi- giant UFO on the street and you report that to MUFON, they own it. Uh, they own it. So My sighting's they, gone so from so now the night. I, I reported it, so and they it's can gone. Catch I can't, you it's not telling even in the your database. UFO story on the show, and we could get sued because you've given the rights to move on. Well, I don't know about that. Well, it's proprietary. It's that, yeah, I don't know. But they definitely can use it in whatever way they they wish. Yeah, to make movies. No. Yeah, I mean, they don't, they, they, they don't have a, an obligation, a public ob- obligation, to release that information. I think it's important also not to lose sight of all the good that's come from all this as well. Like, you know, there's way more of a, of a spotlight on the whole phenomena. I think it, there's a lot of people that were on the fence before that now just because of TTSA and the New York times are, are now at least, you know, believing a little but bit more. The, New York times the skeptics like have, the skeptics ago. have sort of fallen into the background. They have less to really, really do with the whole thing now. Like red was saying earlier, and I mean, it really is, the paradigm is changing faster than ever. So I think there's a, you know, there's always the risk with these things that it could backfire on people, I think. I mean, you know, it, it, as soon as, who knows what's going to happen with our culture and the how open people are becoming to talking about their experiences and their sightings and, you know, just a matter of time before more people see more stuff and people accept it and then the scientific community jumps on board and then, you know, then disclosures out of their hands before they get to do the fake alien invasion. Just a matter of time. We're talking about three weeks, six weeks. <laughs> no, it's like a few years, right? Few years. What do you think about? Let's that, pick Rag? some dates. You know, it, you know, we would have never <laughs> guessed seven years ago that us three would even still be fucking doing a podcast seven years later. So let's pick some. Well, I want to hear. Dates. First of all, I want to hear what Rad has to say about the positive aspect of it. Yeah, I can say all everything has been negative, and of course, like like uh, I told you guys, like. Um, Maybe some fifteen-year-old kid who gets all excited about about all all of these because of Tom DeLonge, because he used to be a, a, a Blink One Eighty Two fan, and then he learns about this. Uh, maybe maybe he will get disappointed in the end because that's something that always happens. You know, at one point you get a, a falling out with with with, <laughs> yeah. with this stuff because it doesn't, you know rise to your expectations like you said you know like oh yeah i thought that by the year 2000 the aliens will were going to land in the white house you know and it hasn't happened yet and then you learn more about it and you read things like i don't know skinwalker ranch and you read things about uh you you, you stumble upon uh information like like uh, mike cleland's blog 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you and you and you realize, holy shit, this thing is actually bigger than than you know little Phys- space. physical phenomena. Yeah. Yeah. There and and if if that comes because you first started with with Tom DeLong, yeah, then definitely that's positive. I I for I can admit that my interest in UFOs started out of uh, hoax material when when Jaime Maussan here in Mexico was promoting the Billy Meyer stuff, right? Yeah. And then I, yeah, I, I, I realized, oh my God, all, all those photos are bullshit, and Billy Meyer is a wacko or is, or, or is a liar. And I could have said, well, that means that the whole UFO business is, is a, a bunch of BS, but I didn't, you know? I, I still was, fasc- was kept fascinated by it. And then, you, yeah, you learn that some of the things that you used to believe in the past were probably uh, not true. The Gulf Breeze case of the 1990s, or Circles, and all that stuff, Bob Lazar, Area 51. But you realize that no matter what, there's still something beneath it all. There's still a core mystery behind UFOs. And if if you use that mystery in order to keep uh, pushing forward in in search of answers, and you learn about um, physics, and you learn about consciousness, yeah. theology, biology, psychology, mythology, you know, and 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 consciousness study, and you and you stumble upon the the work of people like Dean Radin, and and you realize, oh my God, yeah. Aside from the fact that Yuri Geller is kind of like a corn artist, there's actually something uh, uh, about psychic research that is worth pursuing and all of a sudden you realize that even though the ufo field is littered with a lot of hoaxes and misinformation there's still something valuable beneath all the 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 pile of shit if you have the disposition and the stomach to keep digging into it that was very well said yeah and you know what if you would if you if you would have went through the whole like the last 20 years with no expectations, you'd be thrilled. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's, a, that's a really healthy attitude. If you go and say, I'm going to look into it without any expectations or even without, without pretending that I'm going to find any answers to it, you'll probably end up benefiting most, the most about the UFO stuff than people who get obsessed with it to the point that uh, things like disclosure and, and and supporting a certain case or a certain personality becomes their whole identity. Yeah. Right. And then when they realize that that person maybe wasn't what they were expecting, uh, yeah, they 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 can have a, a real uh, nasty crisis of faith, and then maybe they go to the other side, you know, and in the, and they become. Uh, be a lot skeptics, you know, that's happened many, many times with people with people in the field. Yeah. And you know what they say, expectations are just resentments under construction. Well, uh, that's a good one. You know what I was <laughs> yeah. gonna say is, is that it goes Don't way beyond, me. wait, fuck you. It goes way beyond UFOs because that's like, what's the, the quote is, uh, happiness is reality minus expectations. Oh yeah. That's a good one too. Yeah. It's a good one too. Yeah. yeah. Now it's your, yours, Michael. Do you have one for us? No. <laughs> uh anything else that's about it that's I probably think. a good I mean, one as far as wrap yeah. it up graham's got a hockey game to get to through the blizzard we got a blizzard here i think it stopped blizzard and hopefully but man it's been great to have you back red we got oh, wait, a, look, i had one. Oh, oh, michael yeah, perked, perked up epstein didn't kill himself ah! <laughs> <laughs> i like it um <laughs> Yeah, Red, it's been great to have you back. Can we, like, not wait four years for the next time? <laughs> Unless well, disclosure happens tomorrow, and then we are all uh, uh, shipped to Zeta Reticula <laughs> on the next, uh, <laughs> you know, slave ship. I'm hoping they'll <laughs> let me stay on the reserve. What's the over-under on that? <laughs> yeah. Point zero 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 zero. Let's say, yeah, no, let's do this like we should get back. Yeah, we should do it again, like, like another six three, months three, or three or four three, months. Six or, months, yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. 
get you to be so a regular real. regular guest again. Yeah, keep up the awesome writing there and keep us in touch with what you're doing. Thanks, yeah. yeah. And yeah, let's, uh, let's chat offline yeah. about getting you mm-hmm. to uh, not have a dud here the next time. We'll get together. <laughs> no duds. All right. All right, Red. Come back anytime, brother. All right. Thank you, guys. All right, nice buddy. to meet you. Okay. okay. Bye for now. Bye. That was a chat. One and only Red Pill Junkie. What do you R- think? RPJ. That was fun. That was good. I can't believe it's been so long. Yeah, me neither. I don't think it's been four years. It's probably been two or three or something. The last... But it was. I think it was before the, the before before soft D disclosure, you know, before December. We're coming up on the two years. I can year. tell you exactly when it was. It was early 2017. There you go. So it was before that. Yeah. So it was like two and a half years yeah, ago. Two and a half years, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what, like, is this date that's coming up when that article came out? That could be like that little, you know, the BCE, you know, of of UFOlogy. What's the date again? I don't know. December, like, 18th or something like that? 17th, maybe? This year? No, of 2017. Oh. So we're coming up on, we'll be coming up on the two-year anniversary of that. Of of BC? Of disclosure, yeah. Of of AD, of disclosure? After After disclosure. disclosure. Oh, fuck off. Oh, speaking of that, well, that was we like, had that book. So yeah, Dolan's book. Yeah. How can we, how have we not had Dolan on the show yet? He's all in on TTSA. He doesn't want to come on because he knows that Alex is going to beat the shit out of him about this. Alex who? Alex Sakaris. Okay. He's coming on with us if we get Dolan on. Oh, is that why Dolan won't come on? Probably. Well, we could have Dolan no, on with Dolan never. He's, he's too hard to get a hold of. Anyway. No, we should have Alex with us because he, you know, he... He wanted it. That's still part. We owe Alex that. We do owe him that. He came to Calgary, didn't he? Who, Dolan? Yeah. When? Recently? Uh, It was like two or three years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I probably saw him there. Yeah, I think so. Was it the airport? No, I didn't go there. At the airport? Yeah, there's the conference centers there. Oh, in the hotel. It's a cheap, easy way to fly in. Yeah, do the conference. Do a lecture. Definitely not not cheap. Jesus Christ. For the for the guys, no for the, the guy yeah lecturing. for the guy oh, to yeah, come yeah. in as just, long as they put you up and everything yeah no, it's because expensive that, for us yeah that in sure. the conference hall at that airport is not fucking cheap yeah uh, anyways yeah. yeah it was good to chat with Ray again have RPJ back I'm sure you yeah. guys are thrilled to have him uh, find him on Twitter shoot him some love that's red underscore pill underscore junkie yeah he's always blogging for the Daily Grail as well that's right. contributing Check out the there Daily Grail. you know I have a couple blogs on the Daily Grail I forget. What, I forget what my uh, your name was. I forget your what alias was. I forget what my blog name was. I had one on uh, out of place Probably artifacts, sick. and I had another one on flood myths. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, "This sucks." I'm gonna just start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Support the show. Grammarica.ca slash support. We need support because uh, we need support. That's how we run this shit. We don't have any ads. We don't have any corporate sponsorship. We don't have any affiliate programs. We don't have anything. We got you guys and your uh, your kindness and your love and hopefully a couple bucks. If you can see so fit, head over to America.ca slash support today. Sign up for a monthly. We got PayPal. We got Patreon. And we got Stripe. Some people send cash in books. Some people just send cash. Whatever works. Whatever's clever. If you want to get us some cash and you're a little hung up on how you're going to do it, email Graham, email me. <laughs> we'll figure out a way to get some cash here one yeah. way or another because uh, that's how we pay for all of this. Yeah, we like getting other emails too. And Darren's on the Twitters and I'm on Instagram. And email stories and sightings and synchronicities and all that good stuff. Spam Graham. Spam Graham. G-R-A-H-A-M at GrahamAmerica.com. I think I made the other one as a forwarder anyway, just to, just in case. Gram, actual gram. Yeah, but that might have all fallen apart when we went over to Microsoft. I don't know. Then James like disappeared. Just like our PO so. box disappeared off the site too. I put it back. Okay, good. I think. Let's yeah, check. PO box is back on the site. I'm still not impressed. Live that you check. Did that on the show. Live check. I he know. He tricked me and he trolled me on the show. This motherfucker. No, I, was no, just I didn't trick him. It was he good. he, he did didn't believe really me. Well. He genu- genuinely didn't believe me. I'm like, I'm telling you, dude, it wasn't a trick. Here it just, is. No, you said oh, that you saved it for the show. Yeah. Oh, did I? Yeah. Yeah, you said specifically. Well, it wasn't supposed to be a trick. Just so, so you I mean, trick just, did I try this? Does this work? Let's did see I even say trick? Uh, yeah, called him out or something like that. said, I've been saving it for the show so I could call you out. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I just listened to it. That's so good. I don't mind. I'm a big boy. 
Uh, I'm just, I'm doing a test. Yeah. Test. Uh, does this go to you or me, or does it go nowhere? It says it went someplace. All right, good. Okay, well, we'll let's see who out. gets the test. Email. All right. So, yeah, support the show, gramerica.ca slash support. There's the thing on the contact page, gramerica.ca slash contact. We got our phone number there, the text line, 403 Actually, that number's wrong. Don't use the number on the contact page. It's actually 6083, <laughs> not 8083. <laughs> Let's wrap it up there. All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week. Free thinkers, rage against the machine.